Hi, everybody. That's right. Name's Ana Maria. That would be two words, one N, no hyphen, and I'm half Cuban and half Spanish. So if you can roll your R's, I appreciate it. Names are important, especially if you're in broadcast journalism. I mean, you muck somebody's name up on TV, and I'm telling you, it does not always go over too well. Something else that's a biggie for a broadcast journalist and journalist in general is neutrality. Of course, don't take sides when you put together your story, speak to your guests, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> I know this doesn't always happen, but let's agree to take that topic and, and table it for a future talk, shall we? What you may not know is that a lot of us in broadcast news are under contract, meaning that we are not legally allowed to give our opinions in public about issues that we might be, co be covering. And this is basically everything. So, and this also includes, by the way, your personal social media accounts. Big Brother watches all. So, unless that you are producing an op-ed piece where um, you obviously have permission to give your opinion, what you really think on the matter, it doesn't matter. It's not relevant. Um, are you so impressed by your guest that you want to give them an air bow of praise or, you know, conversely spit in their face? Also not relevant. Keep your mouth shut. And I get it, right? Somebody has to be that watchdog, that bastion of, of truth and trust. And, and as a journalist, I'm not going to lie. It's also a nice thing to be a part of, right? It's, it's cool to be a part of that voice. But sometimes I will also say that um, it's hard. It's hard to keep your mouth shut, especially when it's something that you feel really strongly about. I mean, it's so passionately about that you just, you want to jump in there desperately and just be like, amen. I get it. I'm with you. Sustainability is one of those things for me. Climate change is one of those things for me. And as I discovered, it's always been one of those things for me. I mean, by way back to kindergarten, actually, I'll tell you a story. One of my earliest school memories is of being in the library and sitting on this little wooden yellow bench. It's like a bright yellow. And it had this built in, um, you know, a stand, book stand. So you just kind of slid in and then just, you know, propped your book up and then just. And I remember clear as day sitting there and taking in this bit of literary masterpiece. Are you ready? Ta da! Bada ba ba ba's arc by Annette Tison. I mean, circa 1974. Yeah. Basically, if you don't have it, you need to get it, by the way. But anyway, it's about bada ba ba ba, and he's that pink eye in the middle, and his family. And they build an ark and they rescue all of the animals from Earth. Why? Because the humans have polluted it so badly that the Earth has become unlivable. And so bada ba 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 says, I will return the animals to you, humans when you have cleaned up this huge mess. Well, spoiler alert, you know, they eventually do. But that's not the point. The point is what? I mean, I, I, my brain was ready to explode. I, how, could this happen? Is this possible? Could we mess things up so royally? And where do I find this pink guy in case we do, you know? Now, fast forward 40 years later and um i'm still this is something that i still care very deeply about stayed with me i mean to the point where if you ask me what i uh, keeps me up at night other than something horrible happening to someone that i love it's the destruction of the planet it is the effects of climate change and well, the silver lining, of course, is that I'm not alone. Turns out lots of other people care too. Check this out. In the fall of 2019, even before the pandemic started, climate change was trending at a record high on Google and media coverage was following. According to Media Matters and the Climate Change Observatory, they reported subsequent and significant increases in media coverage of climate change in the US in 2019 compared to 2018. And check this number out, 138%. That's how much the US coverage of television was going up 
and print was also following by 46%. And globally, too, across 100 newspaper sources, coverage was up, radio coverage. I mean, just at the country level, coverage increased everywhere. But I'll tell you something, that wasn't always the case, at least not in my experience. I mean, when I started my career in the mid-90s, and I know you're all gawking right now at how amazing I look for my age, um, <laughs> I was working at the CNN Bureau in LA, corner of Sunset and Vine, in case you guys, have, anybody's been there. And, um, you know, sustainability is something that crept in when we covered the fires in Malibu or when we, you know, talked, you know, covered the, uh, the, the mudslides in Malibu, excuse me, or the fires in Santa Barbara. But other than that, you know, not, not, not much else. I mean, and it was Hollywood, but not even this guy. Now, please tell me you're old enough to know him because a news alert, he's older than me, by the way, I'm just saying. Not even with his Titanic fueled star power. I mean, when he founded, I remember when he announced his foundation in 98. I mean, we covered it, um, but not with more fanfare than just another well-intentioned celeb and his cause. Didn't really clock in more than that. And it wasn't because things weren't happening. I want to be clear. Of course, things were happening and things were being covered, but not by mainstream media. It was just a different time. And then, you know, I don't know, fast forward about a decade later, and it's 2012, 13, and we've survived 9-11, and the crisis, and the global economy is starting to pick up, and, you know, I don't know, it was like people relaxed, and suddenly there was more room for, for different kinds of stories, and, and more room for green. Of course, add to that the signing of the Paris Climate Agreement in, in 2015, which also helped really fuel that fire, and then, you know, who can ignore what happened next? Any guesses? That's right. His arrival on the scene. Donald Trump's adamant opposition to climate action and pulling the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Agreement triggered a lot of people. And according to the Yale Climate Connections, it really boosted an increase in media coverage. And just when we thought things couldn't get more interesting, this young lady... Q Greta Thunberg, in case you've been hiding under a rock. Um, and her passionate campaign for climate action took the world by storm. And it was on. Their public Twitter feud has become the stuff of legends. But come on, let's be honest though, right? Nothing like a little drama to sell a few papers. I'm not going to lie. So was it her? Was it him? Wow. Actually, I think we can all safely say that it was a little bit of both. The point is more people, businesses openly cared about climate change and were interested in, in learning how to live, invest, grow sustainably. And, and, and things really started to move to the point where, yes, in the media, it became a little easier being green. Now, I'll give you that you, some of you might be a little too young for this reference, but I am also going to say, look it up because it's a good one. Now, even us at CNN Money Switzerland, where I used to work, um, we developed a format around the business of sustainability. I know, happy place, right? Every week I got to meet and interview people who were using their talents and resources to create businesses, technologies, strategies that were fighting the effects of climate change. So here are a few highlights. Andre Borschberg went for a ride in the old electric, no, we didn't go for a ride. I sat in the electric plane, let's be fair. Uh, talked the rise of impact investing with BlackRock Switzerland's Miriam Stabi Sang, um, chatted all things plant-based meat with Planted Foods founders, Pascal Beery and Christoph Yeni, uh, talked trees, with Dr. Thomas Crowter, especially the UN Trillion Tree Campaign, and covered just about everything with the incomparable climate champion herself, Cristiana Figueres. So like I say, lots and lots, lots and lots of stories and lots and lots of things to talk about, especially right here in our own backyard in Switzerland. Now, I don't know about you, but a day doesn't go by that I don't get an alert from a major news organization talking about something related to climate change. So it's a good thing. And now with President Joe Biden taking off as well and rejoining the US, the US rejoining the, the Paris Climate Agreement, 
the sheer volume of headlines, yeah, they, 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 they speak for themselves. Now, I'd like to wrap it up by saying that beware. This uptick in enthusiasm does not mean that every sustainability story is going to be picked up. You still have to pitch it. And here in here, we are in this safe place where we're all with the program. But out there, sustainability is still a very polarizing issue. This means that for a lot of the mainstream media, especially the bigger outlets, it's still not the easiest sell. So here's some advice. Do not come to us with starving polar bears or burnt acres of rainforests or beaches covered in plastic, no matter how devastating this may be. We know there's a problem. Viewers know there's a problem. But when you come to them with such a massive problem, difficult to relate to. If you want to engage your broadcasters, help them reach their viewers. And how do you do that? That's right. Cha-ching, cha-ching. Share the climate pain with their pockets. Show them the money angles. Show them how climate-related disasters are going to affect their insurance premiums, their mortgages, their, their pension plans, their um, job security. I mean, here's an example a colleague recently put out. I mean, think of the people living on the coastal cities who rely on septic tanks with the rising level of the seawater. It's going to come a day where they can't flush their toilets. And I don't know about you, but in my mind, that takes a whole load of boxes. So then you go, you present the money angle and you hit them with your solution, with your business, with your technology, which the way, with the way in which you are going to support them through this, you're going to help mitigate it or best case scenario, you're going to help prevent this from happening. And I'm telling you, if you stick with those economic, economic and financial angles, you will at least get a call back. And if you don't happen to get that callback, or if that callback doesn't immediately, doesn't turn into getting your story picked up, do not lose faith. Do not lose hope. Be creative instead. Go online. The space there is infinite. Hit the platforms, hit the podcast, hit the, um, all of the different resources that you've got out there at your disposal, because you know what? The big advantage is you could even really grow your chances of reaching a global audience and that thing could blow up. Here's an example of that. You guys heard of haul videos? Seen those? Okay. If you have, then you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, they're basically the show, show and tell videos where people talk about items that they've recently purchased. Well, look at this. According to Think with Google, YouTube has seen an increase of 190% year on year since 2018 in uploads of haul videos with sustainable in the title. I mean, what? 190% year on year and an increase of 13 times that in views of those videos. So here's the headline gang. Always write and pronounce people's names correctly. But more importantly, get out there and do your jobs. Create those stories that will reach people so that we in the media can take up those conversations and move them forward and maintain that vital momentum, which will hopefully one day allow us to produce a shift, a turning of the tide, if you will, in the planet for future generations. And selfishly speaking, well, I'd like to get a little more sleep. Thank you. Mm -hmm.